Hi, welcome to this video about the statistics with IQ War and the package architecture. In this video, we're going to talk about how to compute confidence interval in order to compare two populations. As always, open the booklet and go to chapter practice 10, that is confidence interval for comparing two populations. And um, let's go to exercise one. In this exercise, it says that in order to see whether a advertising campaign has increased the sales of a drug, a sample of eight pharmacies were drawn from a city. In each pharmacy, the monthly sales of the drugs before and after the campaign was recorded in the following table. So here we have two variables, before and after, and this is the monthly sales per pharmacy. Well, part A is to create the dataset. We are not going to create the dataset. We are going to load it from the architecture package. For that, remember, you have to go to settings, manage our packages and plugins, look for the architecture package. Here, unload. Okay. And now go to the workspace tab. Here you will have all the packages. The first one is the architeaching. And we're going to search for this data set and the name is advertising campaign. This is the data set. We're going to make a copy to my workspace, right click, copy to global amp. And now you can open this data set and you will see that it contains two variables before sales before and after sales after the campaign okay well the first question is compute the mean of the monthly sales before and after the campaign are the means different okay we're going to compute the mean of the sample remember that you have to go to teaching descriptive statistics statistics and here we are going to select both variables, before and after. In basic statistics, yes, mark the mean, the arithmetic mean, and submit. And you get here uh, the mean for after and before. As you can see, the mean after is greater than the mean before. That's a good thing because that means that uh, it seems that sales after the campaign are greater than sales before, what means that the campaign is increasing the sales. But be careful to draw the conclusion that the campaign is increasing the sales because this is just the mean of the sample. It's not the mean of the whole population. In order to conclude that the campaign is increasing the sales, we must compare the means of the whole population. And for that, we need to estimate that means. In part C, it asks for the confidence interval for the mean of the difference between the monthly sales after and the and before. Because the difference between sales after and before is the increment of sales. Okay, so we're going we're going to define a new variable. And remember that if you, if you want to compute a new variable from the previous variables, and you have to go to teaching, data, and um, variable calculation. Here select the data set that you want to use the whole data set and here in the calculation expression we are going to compute after minus before and sales after minus sales before and we are going to give a name to this new variable that is, is the increment increment of sales and don't forget to select here the data set where you want to put a new variable that is obviously a advertising campaign after this, you can submit. If you go to the data set, you will see that you have a new variable now. And this new variable is the increment of sales. So obviously it's the difference between sales after and before. A positive value means that the sales uh, have increased, while a negative value, and there are two pharmacies with negative values, means that the sales have decreased, okay? Well, one way of seeing if the the advertising campaign is increasing the sales is 
compute the confidence interval for this new variable eh? for just one population okay and for that you have to go to teaching parametric test means and t test for the mean of one population and here select increment sales and in test auction we are going to uh, assume 95 percent confidence by default and here you have this is the confidence interval for the mean of the increment of sales okay that is from minus 0 0.81 up to 8.81 another way of getting this interval mm, instead of computing a new variable is just going to teaching parametric test means and t-test for comparing the means of two per population well i say that we have two per populations because these two variables before and after comes from the same individuals because we are measuring sales before and after at the same pharmacies so i say that these two data are pair okay this is a typical study in medicines for instance when you want to uh, check if uh, a new drug or a new treatment is effective and you measure something before and after applying the treatment okay this is a typical uh, design study so you have to go to teaching parametric test and then go to means and here select t-test for comparing the means of two pair populations and here select compare the mean of population after with the mean of population before okay so this way we are going to get the confidence interval for the mean of the difference between these two variables okay or what is the same is going to be the mean of the increment yeah? because after minus before is the increment of sales in test options again select the confidence level and uh, that is 0 0.95 and then submit and as you can see in this other way uh, you get exactly the same interval than before and you can compare these two intervals and are exactly the same okay and now we're going to interpret this because question d asks for if we can affirm that the advertising campaign uh, is increasing the sales significantly okay in order to increase the sales the difference between the means after and before must be positive okay um if you look at the interval uh, the mean for the difference is going to fall between minus 0 0.8 and 0 point and 8.8 .8. and as you can see here this interval uh, contains also negative positive values and also it contains zero okay zero means that there is no difference between the two means uh, because we are subtracting the means so if the subtraction is zero, it uh, means that the two mean the two values that you are subtracting is are equal. So, according to this interval, I cannot uh, assure that this campaign is increasing the sales because in order to affirm that we need the whole interval to be positive above zero, and that's not the case. Okay. Obviously, we cannot say that this campaign is not working. I just can say that I have no evidence, significant evidence, eh, or I have no statistics evidence that the campaign is increasing the sales. Part D also says that can we conclude the same if we change the sales after the campaign of the two last pharmacies and we put 190 instead of 182 and 165 instead of 145. So imagine that we go to the data set and we change this uh, and the, the sales after of these two pharmacies here 190 and here 165 okay so imagine that this is the sample instead of the previous one with this sample can we affirm that the campaign is increasing the sales well obviously we are increasing the sales after in two pharmacies and this this plays in favor of the campaign so if we repeat the computation of the confidence interval the interval is going to move to the positive part well let's see if now the whole confidence interval is positive or not we're going uh, we're going just to run again the previous uh, procedure and here just submit and now you get uh, the confidence interval for the mean of the difference 
the mean of the difference is going to be between 1.259 and 13.74. So now the whole interval is positive. Since the mean of the difference falls into this interval, we can say that the mean of the difference, that is the increment, the mean of the increment is going to be positive with a 95% of confidence. Well, the most interesting about this interval is that you can say that the campaign is working, is effective because it's increasing the sale, but also you can quantify how much the sales are increasing. Because eh, if the increment, eh, the mean of the increment falls into this interval, it's going to be greater than 1.25 and less than 13.74, or what is the same. Eh, the increment of sales, in average, is going to be at least 1.259 units more and um, at most 13.74 units more performance. Okay, well, let's go to exercise two. In this exercise, we want to compare the meal that comes from two different farms, X and Y. I want to analyze the fat content, okay? And we are going to load this data set first. Um, this data set is milk. So here, here we have. We're going to eh, copy this data set to my workspace. Just right click and copy to global env. And if you open this data set, eh, you will see that it contains two variables, fat and farm. Fat is a quantitative variable, while farm is a qualitative variable with two categories, eh, farm X and farm Y. Okay, well now, Part B, it asks for the confidence interval for the difference between the milk fat means of farm X and Y. So I want to, in this case, compute the confidence interval for the difference between the means. Okay, the idea is that if you want to compare the means of the two populations, X and Y, you can compute two different intervals one for x and one for y, and then compare these two intervals as we did in the previous practice, or you can compute just one interval for the difference between the means. And in this case, it's enough with uh, with this interval, eh, it's enough to estimate the difference between the means in order to draw conclusion about if there is a difference or not between the means of the milks. Well, in this case, in order to compute the confidence interval for the difference between the milks, between the means, you have to go to teaching, parametric test, means, and t-test for comparing the means of two independent populations. The reason is that eh, milk from farm X has nothing to do with milk from farm I. Why? That is, eh, these two populations are independent. It's not the same that in the previous exercise that the two pharmacies where we are measuring before and after were the same. Here X and Y are different farms, so here we have two independent populations. So let's go to teaching, parametric test, means and select t-test for comparing the means of two independent populations. Well, here you have, have to select the variable eh, for which you want to compare the means, that is fat. And here you have to enter the variable that you want to use in order to split the sample in the groups that you want to compare, that is farm. Well, and now you have to select farms contains two possible categories, two possible values. Here you have to select which variable do you want to compare with which. In this case, I'm going to compare X with Y. Well, you can switch these two values and you're going to get the same interval, but with the opposite sign. So in the end, it's the same. So finally, go to test options and select the confidence level that you want, that is 0 0.95, and then submit. And here you get three different tables. And the first one is the F-test for comparing variances. So at the same price, we are getting the confidence interval for the difference between the means, but also the confidence interval for the quotients between variances. If you have a look to the, uh, to the tables, you have two, two tables uh, for the confidence interval for the difference of means, this and this. The, this table is assuming non-equal variances, and this table is assuming equal variances. The reason is that, depending on if the variability of the two populations are the same, or more or less the same, or not, 
The formulas that you have to use in order to estimate the difference for the means are different. So, in order to see if you have to select this interval, non assuming assuming non equal variances, or this other one, first you need to know if we can assume that the variability or the variance in the two population is the same or not. And for that reason, I need this uh, test, the F test for comparing variances, because here I get the confidence interval for the quotient of variances. In order to see, in order to assume that the two variances are equal, this interval must contain one, because when you are computing the quotient, uh, one means that the numerator equals the denominator. Well, as you can see, this interval contains one, so that means that the two variances eh, could be assumed equals and we have to select then this interval eh, the interval of the table assuming equal variances eh, this is the interval that we have to select for the difference between the means okay well if this interval eh, the interval for the quotient of variances does not contain one you have to select the other confidence interval the confidence interval for the table of assuming non-equal variances, okay? Well, in this case, the confidence interval for the different of means is this, from 0 0.005 up to 0 0.029, and that means that since the whole interval is positive, is above zero, I can say that the different of means is going to be positive with a 95% of confidence. So that means that there is a significant difference between the the means of the two milks. In fact, we can say also that the mean for farm X is greater than the mean for farm Y because remember that this is the difference of means of X and Y. We are subtracting the mean of Y from the mean of X. So that means that if this interval is positive is because the mean of X is greater than the mean of Y. And how much greater? Well, the mean of X is going to be at least 0 0.005 milligrams greater than the mean of y and at most 0 0.029 greater okay so this way we can see not only if there is a significant difference between the two means but also i can quantify uh, the magnitude of the difference okay let's move on to exercise three in this exercise we have a survey performed by a university about the use of the library. In this survey, a random sample of 34 students has been asked about if they go to the library at least once a week. Um, here we have the data set and we have also the gender of the students. So we're going to load this data set first, go to the workspace and the name for this data set is library. Here we go, just make a copy of this data set to my workspace and open this data set. As you can see, it contains two variables, answer and gender. Both are qualitative variables. Eh? The answer is a factor with two possible categories, no and yes, and the gender eh, is also a, uh, a factor with two categories, males and females. Well, part B asks for the confidence interval for the difference between the proportions. Now, it makes no sense to compare the means because the variable answer is qualitative, so it makes no sense the mean. In this exercise, it makes sense to compare the proportion of students, the proportion of males with the proportion of females that use the library. So let's see how to uh, compute the confidence interval for the difference between the proportions of males and females, of females or males. It's the same. For that, you have to go to teaching, parametric tests, proportions, and tests for comparing two proportions. Go to teaching, parametric tests, proportions and here test for comparing two proportions because we have two populations and we have males and females and here first you have to select the variable that you want to estimate the proportion for that is in this case the answer it contains two possible values and here you have to select the value for which you want to compute the proportion I'm going to select C yes because I want to estimate the proportion of students that go, that go to the library um, according to here you have to select the variable that you want to use in order to split the sample in order to define the two groups that you want to compare that is going to be the gender and here you have to select one of the categories 
male and the other one. Well, you can switch these two and you're going to get the same interval but with the opposite sign. So it's the, it's the same. So after this, go to test options and select the confidence level that you want for the interval. Well, it says anything. So we are going to assume then a 95% of confidence. Then submit. And here you have, you get the confidence interval here. Here you get the confidence interval for the difference between the proportions. That is going to be between minus 0 0.875 and minus 0 0.19. As you can see, it's negative. Okay. Um, according to this interval, since the whole interval is below zero, is negative, I can say that the difference between proportion is going to be negative. And that means that because we are subtracting the proportion of females from the proportion of males. So that means that if this difference is negative, it's because the proportion of females is greater than the proportion of males. So I can say that there is a significant difference between the proportion of females and males, and that the proportion of females is significantly greater than the proportion of males. And also we can quantify how many females go to the library more than males in, uh, as a percentage, because according to this interval, it's going to be between 19.39% uh, and 87.55% uh, more. Well, now let's go to the last exercise of the practice. In this exercise, we have a course with two groups of students, one in the morning and the other in the afternoon. In the morning group, 55 students out of 80 pass, while in the afternoon group, 32 students out of 90 pass. Are there significant difference between the percentage of the student that pass in the morning and in the afternoon group? Well, in order to answer this question, I need to estimate the difference between the proportions. And for that, we need an interval, the confidence interval. Okay? We are going to compute the confidence interval for the difference between the proportions of a student that pass in the morning and in the afternoon groups. So, in this case, we are not going to create a set nor variables because in order to compute this interval is enough with the frequencies in both groups or in both samples. And I have the frequencies because I know that in the first sample, the morning group, I have 55 students that pass and in the afternoon group, 32 students pass. So let's go directly to teaching, parametric test, proportions, and select test for comparing two proportions because I have two populations, the morning and the afternoon populations. And here, instead of selecting the variables because we have not defined a variable, we're going to mark manual entry of frequencies. And here, we are going to enter the frequencies for both samples. The sample of people that pass in morning was 55, and the sample size was 80. While for frequency for the sample 2, that is the afternoon group, 32 students pass out of 90. Again, if he says anything about the confidence level, you can assume a 95% of confidence. Then submit, and here you get the confidence interval for the difference between the proportions. That is going to be between 0 0.178 and 0 0.485. As the interval, eh, the whole interval is positive, it's above zero, I can say that there is a significant difference between the, per the percentage of the proportion of the student that pass in both groups. We are subtracting, we are subtracting the proportion of a student that pass in the afternoon group from the proportion of the student that pass in the morning group. And if this difference is positive, according to the interval, I can say that the proportion of a student that pass in the morning group is significantly greater than the proportion of a student that pass in the afternoon group. And also we can quantify how many more students pass in the morning than in the afternoon as a percentage. It's going to be between 17.83% 17 and 48.55%. So that is, in the morning group, uh, the number of students that pass is going to be between 70.83% and 48.55 students more than in the afternoon group. Well, as you can see, this information is very interesting in order to compare uh, two populations. 
And that's all for this practice. I encourage you to try uh, the proposed exercises. And thank you very much for watching this video. Bye bye.